So as a gearhead, I don't know a single gearhead that's into just one gearhead thing, right? None of us like just do one thing. So, um, obviously you guys seen the unboxing of the uh, Stomper um, RC truck. And for Christmas, my wife got me, my wife and kid got me this little uh, SCX 24 axial 24 scale crawler. And I got a couple of upgrade parts that I had bought for it. So we're going to, I'm going to put those on today. But um, I got some Injora beadlock uh, aluminum wheels and tires. Um, put those on. And I wasn't a fan of all of the screws. It, all, it looked too busy. So I just did some of the beadlock screws in it, which is more than enough to hold the tire. Um, and the extra screws would give you a little more weight, but today we're gonna add a little weight in the form of uh, some brass knuckles and diff covers. So that's what I'm tinkering with while Stomper's in the garage warming up. So for messing around with this stuff, I actually found this little kit, um, Hyper Tough 77 piece electronic repair kit at Walmart. Um, but it has all of the size Allen wrenches that you need for these little trucks. And the nut drivers that you need for little trucks. There's some of the extra hardware I got in there. So um, this kit has worked out really, really well for this stuff. Um, and then uh, what I got here are uh, some brass knuckles. They're black. And the uh, diff covers, which are black brass. So, yeah, something to putz with. So we're going to put those on today. Um, I've seen some guys say something about needing to add some grease to the gears while we're in there. Uh, so we'll take it apart and find out what exactly has got to be done. So I'm sure everybody has their own way of doing things, but to me it just seemed easiest to just pull the two screws out of the servo and pull the two screws off of the tie rod, which um, you got to take off anyway to replace those hubs. So anyway, just unplug the servo, move that stuff off to the side. We'll pull these front wheels off and then we'll pull the uh, six screws off the diff cover and keep on plugging away. So it's important when taking these types of things apart to note the screw length. So I laid them out in order. Those are the very top screws when you're looking at the front of the diff cover. Those would be these ones up here in the top. And then the four lower ones would be the slightly shorter. Um, this is the original plastic diff cover versus the brass one. And you can tell just by picking them up that the brass is significantly heavier. Um, there is a bearing in the backside of the factory diff cover that we're going to have to try and pop out of there and transfer over, um, which offers support to your pinion gear, which is that top gear. And it appears the axles in mine actually have a decent amount of grease. Um, they're lubed up fairly well, so I don't think I'm going to pack them with any more. Um, too much can be just as bad as too little, right? Because too much can just cause a lot of unneeded resistance. And these small motors and stuff are already, they're obviously not overly strong. So anyway, let's see what I can come up with to pop that bearing out. Okay, so I got my bearing transferred over. I found this little pick tool in my tools and was able to get underneath the bearing and pry it out and transfer it over into that new cover. And we'll get that cover screwed back on there. So just a matter of setting the cover on there, lining it up and installing those six screws. Remembering that the two longest screws are in the very top. And as simple as that, got the six screws tightened up and it's back together as far as that's concerned. Now we'll get the wheels off and work on doing those outer knuckles. So replacing the knuckles is pretty easy. We just remove that nut in the center of the wheel, which then exposes um, the hex that the nut sits on. You pull that hex off. See if I can do this one-handed. <laughs> Pull that hex off and then there's a pin through there. We'll slide the pin out and then we undo the screws that are on the very top and bottom of the hub. 
once you've pulled those screws out top and bottom then the hub simply slides out you can see the inner axle shaft there and the outer axle stub shaft here will just push out and then we're going to have to push the bearings uh, of the C here or the knuckle um, to push those into the new knuckle again so um, see what we can come up with for that I think my same little tool I can just reach through one bearing to push the other out and we'll push them into the other one we should be able to do it all with just our fingers here okay now as you go to install your new knuckle it is important to note and I'm not sure if we'll be able to see this if the camera will pick it up or not um, you can kind of see there's an angle there right so um, the surface or the plane that the wheel attaches to you want to be vertical when the truck is upright and if you installed the wrong knuckle you grab the other one you install the wrong knuckle see how the plane of the axle is flat and then that surface where the wheel mounts is actually um, angled at a you know a pretty severe angle this way so it's important to make sure you get the right knuckle installed on the right side also um, the uh, new knuckles came with little brass sleeves which go uh, through the top and bottom where your screws go in um, so make sure that you get those in there when you put the screws in or else that knuckle is going to be really floppy. So you definitely don't want that. All right. And we got it all back together. So um, you can kind of see it back in there. But the diff cover and the new knuckles and the diff cover in the back. And then it's always a good idea just make sure that um, you haven't over tightened anything. Um, you know, just make sure that the wheels move free and stuff so you don't over crank the nuts. Same thing with the diffs. Um, when you put the screws on, just make sure you're not cranking them down super tight. You know, make sure everything moves free. You're not binding up that motor. But, yeah, seems to work good. And it's crazy how just, uh, you know, a few little parts really changes the weight of it. I mean, you can tell just picking it up. And, of course, the more weight you got down low, the better a center of gravity you got for for crawling and cruising around so it's less likely to flip over on its lid so pretty cool pretty fun and the upgrades are pretty cheap i mean the knuckles are 10 12 bucks and the diff covers were you know 15 bucks or something like that so yeah and everything you do to it makes it work that much better uh, something fun to do so you can see these tires are a little bit bigger than the originals. And so um, I have moved the upper shock mount from its location on that screw hole on the tower back to that frame spot there. So there was a screw there that I removed and then put the upper shock screw in that new position. And I did the same thing back here. So you can see where it was and where it is now and then i have removed the front bumper and then i trimmed the corners here where the bumper was and i had to trim the fender well arch slightly um, but that's just so these tires will clear um you know at at maximum stuff uh, you can turn the tires all the way and they don't get hung up on the body like they were so yeah, so far with these improvements, it seems to work pretty good. Um, just playing around here in the house. All kinds of fun. Thanks for watching.